this is the uh, first lecture for the first reading, and the first reading is Peter Unger's A Defense of Skepticism. So this is going to require some historical background. Um, so let's go back in time. Let's talk about René Descartes. René Descartes was a great uh, mathematician, philosopher, intellectual, and uh, he lived in uh, the mid-1600s to uh, basically that's an early, uh, excuse me, 1500s or early 1600s. Okay, so what I want to say about Descartes is he is often considered the father of modern Western philosophy. And why am I talking about Descartes when Peter Unger is a 20th century philosopher? It's because Descartes, some of Descartes' ideas influenced uh, those of Unger. Okay, So Descartes was living at a time when there was a uh, beginning of like a scientific revolution, right? And uh, he was a very important uh, influential thinker and a great mathematician. And so, and yet, he was living at a time when uh, people uh, were saying, well, philosophers believe just about anything. Uh, philosophers think they can prove anything, and yet maybe they're proving nothing. And so, uh, and yet there was definite uh, progress in the sciences and definitely in, in mathematics. But the fact of the matter is he wanted solid principles for progress, objective progress, if you like, in, uh, in science and philosophy. So he wanted to find what methods would make it most likely that we can arrive at rock bottom certainty and then we would build from there. Okay. So he believed he had like an architectonic view of knowledge. And he was great, a great geometer. He was very good at geometry, uh, and he was influential uh, and creative. Uh, and uh, but in any event, what we want to say is that uh, so Descartes said we need to have absolute certainty to have knowledge. And uh, okay, so what he did was he said, let me find out what, if anything, is absolutely certain by creating uh, methods of doubt by even if there seem to be exaggerated grounds for doubt, I'll find out what, if anything, can survive the most severe doubt. And so Descartes came up with two, two uh, extreme grounds for doubt. One was not original with Descartes. That is the argument from dreaming. And that goes back thousands of years. And within Western philosophy, it goes back at least until Plato. And, and the question is, how do we know at any given time we're not having a vivid dream? Uh, Plato was a person who believed in the power of the mind and reason, and he was somewhat suspicious of sense experience because of, think about optical illusions, uh, think about all the ways in which uh, perception can be distorted, how things in the distance look smaller, and in, you, know, you can think of mirages, you can think of all sorts of things, uh, hallucinations, and so he was, he was skeptical to some degree of sense experience and believed that uh, reason uh, needs to control our passions and needs to certify sense experience to determine when we can rely on it. But in any event, uh, so Descartes said, uh, how do I know at any given time I'm not dreaming? He asked that question because he wanted to cast doubt on whole classes of our beliefs to find out what, if anything, is absolutely certain. And so he said, how do I know at any given time I'm not dreaming? That suggests that we can't ultimately rely on sense experience. But here's another, uh, the other ground for doubt that he had, which appears to be original with Descartes, is the argument from an evil genius. Now, this is interesting, and it's very reminiscent of, or if you like, suggestive of, uh, the view, Unger's view of, a, of a, a very powerful and possibly undetectable uh, brain scientist who's manipulating people's perceptions. Okay, so so what happened was, Descartes said. Uh, okay, how do I know I'm not dreaming? And then he said, how do I know there's not some very powerful evil mind out there uh, that is possibly distorting my perception? So what I think is real isn't real. Okay, think of the Matrix movies, right? The Matrix movies said what we think is real could be simply a product of computer programming, programming and therefore we can't really rely on what we think is uh, reality based on our experience. Okay? Well, that's what Descartes was doing hundreds of years before the people who created the Matrix movie. Okay? So Descartes says, how do I know 
first of all, at any given time, I'm not dreaming. And second, how do I know at any given time that uh, my perceptions uh, are not really based on physical reality, but are being created by some uh, arch deceiver, possibly undetectable? Okay. Okay. So just think about that. Now, Descartes had an answer to that, right? Descartes is a guy who says, I think, therefore I am, and I cannot be confused about something uh, that my own existence is a conscious being. Because at one point, I could be confused about whether I have a body, but I can't be confused about my being a mind, or my being a conscious being. I think, therefore I am, and anything else that uh, the mind apprehends with the same degree of clarity and certainty, I can accept as true. And so his, uh, so his basis is, uh, is self-knowledge. I think there I am. And then he tried to build from there. And, and, and then he eventually tries to prove that God exists and, then he try, and that God's not a deceiver and that uh, we can't, God's not going to let us fall into error if we go of our way to uh, believe very carefully. And yet if the physical world didn't exist in roughly the way it appears to exist, uh, then God would be a deceiver. So uh, I don't want to go into all the details of Descartes, but my point is that Descartes' uh, thinking influenced that of Unger. But the difference is, one of the many differences, is that although Descartes began in skepticism, he thought he had ended up with knowledge. And in fact, he thought he was giving us a basis for arriving at new knowledge. Okay. Um, Unger is different. Unger begins in skepticism and ends in skepticism. So I want you to understand that. Unger is saying, how do I know at any given time that I'm not being manipulated by this brain scientist? Well, that's very suggestive of Descartes' uh, evil genius, okay? And so let me, let me add further to this. Okay, so what did I ask? So let's go back in time. Think of Descartes when you're thinking of Unger. And we can go also forward because the Matrix movies were created uh, after Unger uh, wrote uh, this, he wrote actually a book uh, defending skepticism and in any event. So, okay, so let's, let's, let's talk about something else related to all this. Okay. So Unger has this belief that if you analyze the concept of knowledge, what you'll see is that we don't know just about everything we claim to know, uh, and especially anything we claim to know about the physical world. Unger is defending radical skepticism. And what he is doing is he's trying to cast doubt on our belief that we really have a reasonably good grip on the way the world is and that we know the physical world exists and, we, and we're and we able roughly to know uh, what is in the physical world and, and its nature. Okay. So what he's doing is he's going to say the following. If I know something, it has to be true. That's not controversial. but. He's also saying, okay, if I know it, it's got to be true, and that means I can't be mistaken. Well, okay, that's in a way not controversial. But he seems to go one step further. He seems to say, if I know some proposition, not only must it be true, not only must it be true that as a matter of fact I'm not, must be, I'm not mistaken, it has to also be true that I couldn't possibly or theoretically be mistaken. And that, that is in fact, um, a controversial view. Indeed, that seems to go beyond what most people believe. Because what he seems to be saying, what Descartes seems to be saying, if I know something, then it has to be that I, I couldn't theoretically even be mistaken about it. And, and so he's saying that we, in a sense we have to be infallible about whatever basis we have for our beliefs, including those beliefs about the physical world, which are going to be uh, well, I assume are going to be very much connected to our sense experience, but what he's doing is he's going to say, well, how can you really rely on your sense experience if it's possible that someone could be manipulating your brain? Now, I must admit, this is far-fetched. Okay? And by the way, Descartes referred to his grounds uh, for doubt as being hyperbolical, as being exaggerated. Okay, so this is far-fetched, uh, but it's not it's not all completely in the twilight zone because we know that when people's brains are manipulated in various ways as when they have operations that it can affect their perceptions and, and you can reactivate memories and then people seem to be reliving things that uh, and re-experiencing things that, that, that they're not currently experiencing 
course. So it, it's it's not completely in the twilight zone, but what he he's but what's unusual about um, about Unger is he's using this appeal to this hypothetical brain scientist to try to undercut, indeed undermine, indeed overthrow um, the belief we have that the physical world exists and we have a pretty good idea of uh, what it's like. And what he's saying is if it's theoretically possible for us to be mistaken, we can't know. And then when it comes to the physical world, he's saying it's theoretically possible for us to be mistaken about anything concerning the physical world. We'll call those uh, anything based on uh, empirical beliefs. Empirical, okay, empirical, E-M-P-I-R-I-C-A-L, means relating to experience and especially experience uh, through the senses, okay, observational beliefs. Uh, and so what he's saying, we can be mistaken about any belief that's based on one or more of the five senses, okay. And so if that's the case, he says, then we can't know anything based on those experiences. Okay. Now, think about the implication of this. Suppose it's theoretically possible that you who are viewing this right now are dreaming and that you're in your bed dreaming and you're not in the room, whatever room you're in, viewing this. Suppose it's theoretically possible, but in fact it's not true. In other words, you're awake, presumably, when you're viewing this. I would hope so. It's going to be a lot harder to understand it if you're not. And so so you're awake, let's say, but and, and, but it's possible that uh, you're mistaken about thinking you're awake. Okay. Now, what Unger seems to be implying is that if you are awake, even if you're awake and you believe correctly you're awake while you're viewing this video, if it's theoretically possible that you're dreaming, even if you're not, even if you have what normally would be reasonable evidence for believing you're awake watching this, then you can't know that you're awake watching this. Now that that's a, a pretty uh, extreme idea according to most people. Most people would say if you believe something and you're correct and it seems to be based on relevant and what normally would be adequate evidence, unless you have very strong reason to believe you're incorrect, then you can be said to know what you believe. And that's not what Unger is doing. See, radical skepticism is trying to undermine the usual standards of evidence. Okay, So what it's saying is that, well, it doesn't matter. The radical skeptic is saying, I don't care what your evidence is or what you think it is. You can always be mistaken about it. You could always be dreaming. Or in the case of Unger, he says it could always be true that some brain scientist is manipulating your brain or my brain into thinking that rocks exist when we don't. Now that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Uh, well, uh, it's that's a very radical belief, obviously. And uh, you might think, uh, here's a little thing for you to think about. What do you think is more certain, the belief that, that uh, rocks exist or the belief that there's a rock in front of you here and now? Okay, well, my answer is the belief that rocks exist would be more certain. It would be a belief that you'd be less likely to give up than the belief that there's a rock in front of you here and now. And, and to, to illustrate this point, okay, if, the, if you believe there's a rock in front of you here and now, you could be dreaming, of course, and yet it could still be true that rocks exist, or there could be an optical illusion, uh, there could be a mirage, there could be uh, somebody drugging you, uh, there could be any number, uh, or even if you're not being drugged and taking ordinary prescription drugs, sometimes it's possible for people to have hallucinations. And so, okay, and you're not, uh, but if, and you could be mistaken then about whether there's a rock in front of you. Or say you think there's a rock in front of you, you hear your alarm clock, you open your eyes, and seems things seem even clearer than they are, uh, than they were before. And you might say, well, I was dreaming. Okay. But what could, what one thing could happen, what one ex experience could happen that would lead you to believe that uh, rocks don't exist? It's very difficult. I mean, could you, could you think of, okay, you think you're waking up, you're in a room, you see, and there's a guy who looks to be seven foot tall, kind of looks human, it's humanoid, and uh, something like me, maybe he's got no hair, whether he's shaving it or not, you know, and he's got a big head, and he's got a big robe on, and he seems to be telepathically communicating you, saying, go to the uh, window, and you'll see that rocks don't exist. In fact, you thought you were on Earth, but you're not. You're on a different planet altogether, and you look, and you get up, you're, you're lying down, you're on a, a gurney or something, you're lying down, get up, 
you go to the window and indeed you see everything seems flat it looks like everything is white and you see no rocks you see no trees uh, are you gonna say at that point wow that I really was fooled rocks don't exist after all or are you gonna say maybe I'm dreaming right now maybe I'm hallucinating maybe somebody gave me drugs maybe I'm going insane and I would suggest to you that any of those theoretical explanations would uh, be more likely than that rocks never existed and at least uh, that's so therefore you wouldn't just give up uh, the belief in rocks because of uh, those that particular set of experiences but in any event um, my point is that Unger tries to get a lot of mileage out of this belief that he has that the concept of knowledge has a peculiar implication namely that we don't know nearly everything we believe we know including that uh, rocks exist okay and he gets that mileage out of a belief that if you know something it not only must it be true which isn't controversial to say that and not only must it be true therefore that you're not mistaken about it which really isn't controversial but it has to be true that you couldn't conceivably or theoretically be mistaken about it and that is controversial and critics have attacked him on that. Critics have said well look look Unger uh, do we really mean that if we know something that not only that we're correct about it and we believe correctly and not only do we have normally what would be sufficient evidence but do we also believe that we couldn't possibly be mistaken couldn't theoretically be mistaken and typically people say no that's not what we mean and so therefore he's revising the concept of knowledge and therefore we should not accept the radical skepticism that flows from uh, his revisionary concept of knowledge okay. so I want you to think about this I want you to think about do you believe that Unger is in fact correct that if we do know something it has to be true not only that we are we have a correct belief that seems to be based on what normally would be sufficient evidence but it also has to be true that we couldn't possibly be mistaken not that we couldn't uh, in other words not that we're as a matter of fact not mistaken but that we couldn't even theoretically or possibly be mistaken do we really believe that do we really believe that and I think um, I think uh, a lot of people would doubt that including our next author and I'll be talking about that in the next lecture okay so again I want what do you what are the takeaways from this you need to understand that Unger is a kind of modern version of Descartes except Descartes was a methodological skeptic who used skepticism to try to find out what if anything is absolutely certain and Descartes thought he was successful in that enterprise so Descartes in a sense wasn't at heart a skeptic but he used skepticism as a method to find out what if anything is absolutely in a certain or what he called an indubitable something that we'd be incapable of doubting and that would be the basis for the theory of knowledge okay now Unger I've told you is different from Descartes in, in certain ways and especially in the following way that while Descartes began in skepticism but ended up in what Descartes regarded as knowledge and a basis for creating new knowledge and certifying new information as knowledge, Unger in contrast began in skepticism and ended in skepticism. Those are uh, okay. And then I wanted you to see the connection between Unger's view and the modern movies, uh, The Matrix, The Matrix movie and because in those movies the idea was what seems to be obviously true some things that were obviously part of our experience could have been manufactured and manipulated so that we could be completely incorrect about things to us that seem obvious including uh, our experience of the physical world so I wanted you to understand all that now here's some other advice what I suggest that you do is you could look at the written lectures first before you even do the readings and I do encourage people to get the book and do the readings okay the written lecture and then you could go over the readings and then look at the video and then look at the video but in any event um, I think that uh, I mean some people will do things obviously in different orders I mean some people will even look at the lecture before doing anything else before uh, going to the notes you have to decide what will work best for you 
some people find it difficult to go to the readings cold without getting the background uh, from either the video lecture or the lecture notes. You have to decide for yourself what will work best. What will work best? Obviously, you should do all three. You should do the readings, you should carefully study the lecture notes, and you should look at the video. And what I encourage people to do with the video is I encourage you to look at it repeatedly uh, when it comes to anything you're not quite sure of. Okay, and then if you're, it, then you could also go to the lecture notes repeatedly to clarify. And if you still are not sure what's going on, then you should email me, and I can I can help you with some of your questions. Uh, and if necessary, and I'll be more than happy to do this, we can set up uh, a little phone chat. It could be a few minutes long, or it could be a half hour. Uh, I'll be more than happy to do that because I'm be very accessible to you guys. Very, very accessible. Um, so again, you, ideally you want to uh, you want to do the readings, you'll want to look at the lecture notes, the written lecture notes, and you'll want to look at the videos. Okay, and you'll have to decide what or will be the best order for you. Again, some people find it better to uh, look at either the video or the lecture notes before doing the readings. But ideally, again, you should do all three. Again, this was our first topic. It's the it's skepticism, radical skepticism. And that's the theory that we cannot know just about everything we think we can know, and especially can't know things about the physical world. And that's certainly the position that Unger is defending. And I've said to understand him, it pays to know something about Descartes, and it, who lived centuries ago, and it also p uh, pays to uh, maybe have some understanding of the Matrix movies. Uh, and in any event, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover today. I'm hoping that this will clarify uh, Unger's reading.